Another crack. A swift crack when his whooped tail. Wow. It's been a long time since I put that uh, Tenacious D soundbite in here. I think I even got rid of it because I just I did it too many times. What's a whooped tail? I don't know. He's talking. It's it's it's, it's the song about the best song in the world. The song that they sing doesn't actually sound anything like the song that they originally sang <laughs> because the devil or something like countered them on their long journey and made them play the best song in the world or he was going to eat their souls. And they didn't do well with that. No, they did. They nailed it. Oh. They played the first thing that came to our head. It just so happened to be it was the best song in the world. <laughs> And uh, fair enough, and uh, and then and then like they so they played for the demon, and then the demon so was the like, "Sound bite was born." He was like, "Be you angels?" And they were like, "No, we are but men." Rock on, and and there was something about a swift crack went to whoop a tail, the, oh, the like beast, a, and they uh, like they killed the beast with the best song in the world. Gotcha. You should go check it out. Tenacious D. It's definitely definitely worth <laughs> ten years ago reference, but it works. Oh yeah. I was gonna do. I was gonna sing that song for karaoke when we were, my wife and I were on uh, our little trip. When I was uh, injured with uh, the wife, wants to go on a trip. Um, you called that being injured. You were out for a week. Yeah. yeah. So uh, story time with Jay Wayne. Coming she right she up. wanted me to do karaoke, and I was like, "Well, this is the only song I'm singing because I'm the worst singer ever. I'm not gonna go up there." <laughs> And sing just hurt real, everyone's ears. For, sing a real song by singing. I'm the so, worst singer. I try not to do it on this podcast because I, I. So you rock. You're gonna go rock a so Jack, gonna Jack try Black comedy <laughs> special. But they didn't have it. Why was would like, they? Well, I'm not doing it. Right. I'm not doing it. I'm yeah. Not gonna put everybody through this so for then, selfish reasons. So then you're looking at the DJ like you take your karaoke way too seriously if you don't have a Jack Black Jack Black playlist. Right. Okay. Yeah, we were deep in Seattle territory. Then mm-hmm. they didn't. They weren't. They weren't digging the Jack Black. Gotcha. All right, well, we're about to talk about uh, one of my favorite players. Mr. Mike Williams. Mike Dub, and not just because he's a Clemson guy, and I'm a Clemson alum, and, and, and not just because Matt Kelly hates him, although that's a nice bonus. Nice. Uh, but just because he's so big and awesome. He is big and awesome. And uh, I feel like you got to go get him, because he's only going to get more and more expensive as the season goes on and his career goes on. Would you disagree? I don't. I don't disagree at all. Obviously, he had um, a bummer for a rookie year. Bummer. Had, slipped disc happens. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when the slipped disc comes around. So he he had he had the slipped disc, and everybody scared his value plummets. Right. Matt Kelly said that he was so upset that people were going to be able to cop out on saying that Mike Williams wasn't good because he got injured. He wanted him to be healthy so that he could play bad, and he could tell you how bad he could be. Like I told you so. Right. I told you this guy was gonna be so bad. Look at his metrics. Right, right, right. Because he's Fuck big, big and awesome, so he can't be good at football. Right. Um. The you know right now, there's no doubt about it. His value is going to continue to climb. As we talked about, uh, Tyra Williams coming in at 187 in DLF, and and it's just you know. As bad as everything was last year with Mike Williams, he had a couple of flat, made some really sick looking touchdown grabs at the beginning of this season, and you know already at fifty four, which is the middle of the fifth round. Um, last pick in the fourth round is forty eight, so fifth fifty four is literally dead in the middle of the fifth round. Is Mike Williams for the Chargers on a limited resume, but long for spectacular plays already. And it's incredible. It is incredible. And the, I mean, he's it's what just, he did all throughout college. It's not new news. Just if, balls gone up there, and you're thinking, how in the hell did he come down with that? Right. How did he make that catch? Exactly. And there's, so yes, he's he's got five touchdowns on the season already. Boom. And on 32 targets, which right. is ridiculous rate already. And averaging 18 yards a catch, putting together some big plays, long cut touchdowns and shorter touchdowns where he's a, a huge ass man doing what he does. He's and a mammoth. So there's no doubt about it that his value is going up. And he's the kind of guy that you need to have involved in a trade where it doesn't look like he's your number one target in the trade. And, you know, you're trying to water it down and pretending like Mike Williams is the throw in. If you come firing off for Mike Williams, then you might have somebody. You're going to get the radar alert, mm-hmm. and your people's hair, you know, the hair on the back. Hey, of who's this Rex Burkhead guy? Right, right. <laughs> That's the, an inside joke for for our old listeners. Right, there. right. If so the hair on the back of their neck's going to stand up and mm-hmm. be like, "You're trying to take Mike Williams from me. Something's up." Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's you know, 
if you actually watch the games, you have seen Mike Williams play really good football. He just looks so big out there, like just standing there in his stance. He's he's huge, 6'4", 218. This guy is, is faster in pads than his 40 times show. No doubt. Uh, it's just the ball tracking is amazing. And it's just he has that last second pull away from the defender towards the ball. Like you watch these big long plays where Phil's just unleashing a ma- massive throw downfield. And Mike Williams, who didn't run a fast 40, that was a big knock on him. He didn't even run at the combine because he didn't want to hurt his stock too, too much, which good good job. He got drafted seventh overall. It worked. Yeah, it worked. The plan worked. Nobody cared that he didn't run. The, the Chargers didn't care that he didn't run a 40 at the combine. Mm-hmm. And so he's downfield, and it's like the defender's on him, and then just at the last second, he just pulls away. Yeah. And that's that's one aspect of his game that's awesome is that ball tracking last second separation. But say the ball's not away from the defender and it's just up in the air and it's one of those 50-50 balls or 20-80 balls. Yes. He's coming down with that. He catches the 20-80s. Those hands are so strong. The mittens, man. Yeah. Just so big and strong. He's so big and strong. Like, he can't run... You know, remember you play an NBA jam, you run around mm-hmm. holding the turbo button too long, mm-hmm. now you guys wore out. Mm-hmm. You know, like Mike Williams can't run down the field on turbo button. Right. But when that ball's in the air, there he hits turbo button. Right. And, you know, and he's juiced up and then he's And he can doing stack what a defender does. and his body is a separation. He's like Kelvin Benjamin, but not fat, you know? This is the, he's I, like a I, better I he's like a there. souped up Kelvin Benjamin. I can get there. I can get there. He's he's leaner than Kelvin Benjamin and he's meaner than Kelvin Benjamin's ever played. Just incredible eye-popping catches. There's no doubt he's a playmaker. The nasty back shoulder fades. Like, that was his specialty. Him and Deshaun Watson in college just, just you couldn't defend a back shoulder throw from Deshaun to, to Mike Williams. It's incredible. And then I think he's underrated after the catch. He hasn't gotten a ton of opportunity this far, but he crushed it in college, and it, these... It, he just hasn't had a ton of volume, right? We mentioned it before. The, the receiver's biggest foe is re- targets. Right. It's super hard to catch the ball if it's not thrown to right. you. Like I, it's, it's pretty much Chinese riddle on how you rack up receptions without targets. Right. I still hadn't figured it out yet. And that's not the role he's playing on this team, right? That's Keenan Allen working the short and intermediate. Exactly. And, and the Chargers. And you can, and, and short crossings. I said this after three or four weeks in the season about Miami Dolphins when we were mad about Kenyon Drake. They were winning, so you couldn't argue with it. Whatever. Right. You got the W. Right. The Chargers have Which won. somehow they still are. Right. Yeah. Still got a dub. What a beat the Jets. The Chargers are winning five games in a row. And Mike Williams' catch totals goes one, three, one, one, one. And, you know, that's and one of them was 50 yards for a touchdown. The next game, last week it was, this week it was one for 30 and a touch. The week before it was one for 55 and a touch. Just ridiculous. Those are plays that win games for the team. Right. That's why he was drafted seventh overall. They don't care about our fantasy team. Mm-mm. Four targets, one catch against Cleveland when Tyrell Williams was blowing up with 30 points. You know, like he's got... 18 excuse me he got 18 catches in nine games like he's the catch the volume is not there but the plays and the touchdowns the fantasy points that are coming out per target per touch per catch are ridiculous out of mike williams right now and we just talked about tyra williams you know given the high draft tender and restricted free agency this year and if he leaves the chargers next year you're only going to hear more mike williams right and again out of a a bummer of a freshman year, uh, you know, rookie season. He had one good game when they blew out the Buffalo Bills where he had, you know, eight targets or eight catches or something like that. But everything else was similar usage to this year, but a lot less efficiency, a lot less production, a lot less big, did, no touchdowns last year. And clicking this year with Phillip Rivers with the touchdowns. And I think there's obviously anybody can get hurt. You've had the back issue with Mike Williams, and that's always going to be in the back of your mind to be scary. But that but, was his junior year, and then he came back and played a full season with Clemson, and we won the national championship, and he balled out of control absolutely. and got drafted seventh overall. Absolutely, and then blew a disc out. And then slipped a disc. <laughs> just a slip? Not make it sound just like a, Just the tip? Maybe it's a similar definition, but blowout sounds worse than it, a slip. No doubt. Oh, <laughs> completely opposite, yeah. A slip disc and a blown out disc are two different things. I, I think imagine it sounds worse. I've never had a blown out disc, but <laughs> or slipped. I had a, I had a little. Tweak. I've never had. A I slip. had a disc tweak. Yeah, I had. I had. A, I did tweak something 
in playing basketball one year and I had to have my buddy, my buddy drove me to like my mom worked at the mall. So after practice, he would drive me to, to meet with my mom and like every single bump in the ground, like every move that we made, it was just a sharp, you were in trouble, terrible pain. You were in trouble. Well, so it slip, only lasted like a day though. Slip so. disc way better than a, than a blown out disc. Right. We have perhaps medical knowledge to back <laughs> this up. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's a physical therapist, so you right, know. we should probably check on this. I know some stuff. We're definitely not going to get back to you about it, though. So <laughs> there's no chance that Mike Williams value it and going up if he doesn't get hurt. Let's just go ahead and circle the wagons on that. Even if you know, even if Tyrell Williams stays, which he's not, they probably got other they, they got multiple backs, and that was you know the first couple games in the char- for the Chargers this year. Again, like we said with Tyrell Williams, they're on the same team. It applies. The running backs were catching everything, and then you got Keenan Allen. And, you know, Mike Williams is having a semi-breakout year on very limited targets. Very, He's got 31 targets, which is two more than Tyrell. Yeah, 18. you add up Tyrell and, and Mike Williams, you still don't get the Keenan Allen targets. You That's put those right. two guys together, you don't have Keenan Allen targets. Or receptions. But you do have 10 times as many touchdowns. Good point. Because uh, Keenan only has one, whereas Mike and Tyrell both have five apiece. Um, Mike Williams has played, let's see, 80... 88 snaps less than Tyrell. Yeah. So Tyrell and Keenan are out there for the majority, and then and then Mike Dubs is bringing up the rear. Well, that's interesting. And let me jump in there and cut you off sure. because they have very they have about the same targets. Mike and Tyrell Williams. 29 for Tyrell, 31 for Mike. And Mike's playing. If you got 80 get 80 snaps difference, what's that? 10 a week in eight games ish. Yeah. So he's he's playing. A, a fair 15 percent less in the game mm-hmm. at a, you know 60 ish snaps per game or whatever so he's on the field 10 to 20 15 percent less than tyra williams getting the same amount of targets and the same touchdowns and the same type of catch they mirror image average per catch um you know so, and like you said he's not getting a lot of opportunities to show you the fact that he can break tackles He's going to break those tackles in the opposite way than Tyrell. Like I said, Tyrell's not really breaking tackles. He's just avoiding contact altogether. Mm-hmm. Mike Williams is going to blow your arm off. Right. You better bring something more than just your right arm trying to trip this man up. Right. He will separate your shoulder to get by you. You go back and ask Carolina Gamecocks his senior year mm. when he carried three of them over the goal line. Right. Because the first one thought he was tackling him, and the second one was like, we got this guy, and the third one was like, this is going to be fun. Right. And then all of a sudden, they get thrown off in the end zone, and he's still standing. Right. And it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. <laughs> that was, I, was, I was at that game. Speaking of ridiculous, Boring. Clemson tangent here as a Gamecock. Yeah. I couldn't be more jealous of Dabo Sweeney as yeah. y'all's coach. Yeah. This, and you might have more information on this, but apparently he's trying to get every senior a, a touchdown this year. Mm. And two year, two weeks ago, he had every single player that dressed got in the game. 94 players, I think. All got in the game. Yeah. The brotherhood and the momentum and the just atmosphere around that program right now. I was talking about it with my parents on Sunday because we're all big Gamecocks. And mm. I was like, just get used to getting your teeth kicked in mm. because... This thing ain't stopping anytime soon. Yeah. The only thing we can hope for is that Saban retires and Dabo goes back to Bama because that's mm. where he played college ball. And that's right. what me and my dad are working on. Me and my dad are always working on <laughs> the next theory, the next conspiracy to why Carolina's going to win the division uh-huh. and how we're going to go 10 and 2 and how Clemson's about to get bad. We're always working on those conspiracies. <laughs> and we had our run. It's, the, it's a Carolina you know, struggle. We had our run. Yep. So Spurrier came in there and took us to a couple, three or four 11 win seasons. We were ranked top five for a while. I we beat, beat Clemson we four beat, years we, in a row. We beat y'all five years in a row, five. I think. And we had our run, but y'all got Dabo, mm-hmm. and we don't. And I don't get me wrong, Must Champ's a fighter. He's the kind of coach that you want in your back in the back alley with you when you get called up in a bad situation. Must Champ looks like he'll tear your head off, <laughs> but. Dabo Sweeney. That was going to fizzle that argument out. He's, and we're he, all, he's, not gonna, only that, he's going to get the other guy's wallet. Right. And, and it's they're going to hand it they're over. They're going to be happy to give it to right. him. Right. <laughs> he, he, there will be no jaw breaking right. in the back alley with Dabo because right. he's going to talk him into coming and visiting the campus. Right. They're going to rub the rock. Right. And run down the hill <laughs> and wear purple and orange. And Drink it's going to be the just baby. the ugliest color combination you've ever seen in your life. I uh, watch but, it. But. They're going to win ball games, orange and they're going to favorite color kill you seventy something to six or whatever. Ask Louisville how it feels to play Clemson. Well, 
And that's not even us, man. We're not a 77 point run the score up on you, but if our third stringers are breaking off touchdown runs, what, what are you supposed to you do? You got to run, you got to play to the end of the game. Just don't don't score? No, come yeah. on, man. You, you got to play. Yeah. So anyway, to get to, to to transfer back to Mike Williams from the Clint, I just had to say that like mm. the what Dabo what Dabo's got going on in Clemson right now is absolutely ridiculous. About to cut that up and getting, put it on Twitter. Getting all the seniors <laughs> a touchdown and making everybody get in the game that dressed. Like, there's no reason. There's like, why wouldn't you want to go play there right. as, a, as a top recruit to right. go be a part of that? Outside of Alabama, there's not another college right now who can say you need to be playing here. Obviously, Texas Longhorns has like this $80 million locker room. This is the coolest thing you've ever seen. And there's other places that we can Michigan recruit. And Oklahoma, Notre Dame, Ohio State. Notre Dame has a fight. You know, there's play, there's places to play. Yeah. But why would you not want right. to go be a Clemson Tiger if you're not if you can't make it to Bama? I don't get it. I, I mean, you could go wear better looking jerseys and be a Gamecock, but mm. I mean, Dabo could, is Dabo. You gonna say the Gamecocks are better? This is the first thing I've disagreed with you on uh, so far. It's just purple and orange. I mean, that just doesn't oh, get great. too much uglier. Do you know what though? I heard is so. I did. I was a new fact here, or new new um, fun fact that I learned from another Clemson fan is that purple was never an original color. It was like dark blue or something, and they warmed so much it got faded and turned purple, and they stuck with it. But now Dabo is saying that that wasn't original colors, and we're not wearing purple anymore. It's just orange and white. Really? So no more purple outs. Well, that's great. Every once in a while, we'd wear all purple, and that shit was tight, man. That shit was you. It was like an atmosphere, and you knew that all oh, snap. We were wearing purple. This is about to be it. That's the best thing I've heard all day. No more yep. purples. No more purples. I don't Get think. Rid of Unless what I was told is incorrect. She seemed uh, seemed like a credible source. She wrote for a newspaper, so <laughs> some of those purple jerseys didn't look terrible. Yeah, it's just, it's just I'm just looking through a Gamecocks eye. There, sure. you know, it could be blue and white and red. I don't, right, you know, right. it could be any. Co- it could be if you wore garnet and black, <laughs> it would make me throw up in my mouth. Yeah, but we wear garnet and black, right? And I like it. And and it's just the mascots my biggest issue. Well, I mean, at least ours can't potentially get loose and kill somebody. <laughs> we don't actually have a tiger though, so that's kind of a bummer and safe at the same time. That's true. I get, like well, LSU has a dang tiger. I think I'm Auburn saying. has like, a you're tiger. You're really taking a chance on somebody getting mauled. Not we're not this. trying to. Ti- we're not trying to rat- wrangle a tiger. Why would you try <laughs> and take that guy out of his natural element and put him in a little box? I like it, but not not to say that Sir Bixper, that our you know our <laughs> actual gamecock that we have, not to say that that guy couldn't go take your eyeball out. All right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Enough of the college talk. All right, so let's put Will Mike Williams up against somebody here. What uh, would you rather have, uh, Mike Williams or Chris Godwin? Mm. That's, that's a toughie. A, that's a good question. Yeah, when I think about Chris Godwin, I immediately think about Mike Evans and mm-hmm. OJ Howard, mm-hmm. two staples. Obviously, OJ Howard's just now coming into his own. He's a super young, super athletic, Megatron looking guy. He looks like Calvin Johnson at a tight end position. I'll stand by that and. He's an absolute freak. He's a monster. And he's just now starting to get targets. So I have to think about that. And then you got at Mr. Humphreys, you know, who you <laughs> have a Clemson to, guy. You basically you need to just shake his hand because yeah. he's a legit receiver. And we've been waiting for like two or three years now for him to stop getting run. Right. And when they're trying to go down the field, he's out there doing his thing. He got way more snaps than Chris Godwin in the last couple of weeks. And he's got the easiest job out there. I mean, you got Deshaun well, stretching the field. Right. Mike Evans requires all this attention and. You know, yeah. I mean, Boom. I don't know how it could get any easier for Humphreys, but yeah, I like, I like what Chris Godwin does. I just feel like Williams is just a bigger, faster, stronger Chris Godwin. Maybe he's not necessarily faster per se, but Chris Godwin I, was pretty fast. I think he ran a four four or something. Yeah, he, he, you know, he's just. He's a smaller. He's 6'2", not quite as big. There's nothing wrong with being 6'2", 212. No, right. And in this day and age, in this NFL, it might even be – the you could plug right into the Ram system and you don't have to be 6'4", 220. But I'll take it. Sure. You know, so I, I would – I have no problem if you lean Chris Godwin there. I would and, – and DLF ADP actually has Mike Williams a couple points ahead of Chris Godwin as mm. of last month anyway, which actually surprised me. I thought I was going to be an overwhelming – minority on that spot Mm -hmm. but i would i would if i had to pick one and just put them on my team for somebody that was going to be in my lineup every week making a significant difference uh, the upside is with mike williams right maybe the safer play is chris godwin 
but I don't play it safe at wide receiver. I take huge home run cuts at wide receiver because I can play it safe for side. I can take a third round pick and buy a veteran. And if I have to buy even a solid veteran, I can play take a second round pick and buy a veteran when I in, in the off season. <clears throat> I'd have to agree, even though I mean Chris Godwin has his he's got four touchdowns this year on thirty receptions, more yardage, maybe not the average is not quite as big, but I mean he's he's coming out and showing out. Yeah, but that's double the catches for half for the same amount of touch for one less touchdown. That's fair. Just saying, yeah. Mike um, Mike, Mike Williams, Williams. Is a, he's a red zone machine, and he's in not only red zone machine like one catch, fifty five yards touchdown like that. Like you said, right. he can catch the bombs. It's not just he's a, a late separator. It's not <laughs> he hits a turbo button. It's, right. It's not just and box not. you. It's not just boxing you out in the end zone for these touchdowns. He can and will box you out in the end zone. Absolutely. But he can also catch it like this past week. His touchdown, that thirty yard catch and run. I thought that was Tyrell Williams for a second, and then I really kind of squinted, and I was like, "Wait, he's way too big to be Tyrell mm-hmm. Williams," you yeah. know. And then all of a sudden, he was in the end zone, and you could tell it was Mike Williams. But I mean, that was not like a fade route. Right. He called it on the sidelines and made something happen. Right. And that's I'll take Mike Williams. Mike Williams or Doug Baldwin? Yikes! How are you going to ask me about my boy? I know. Uh, all right. So we had a Patreon question the other day. And somebody was asking about Mike about Doug Baldwin. I think it, I think he put Doug Baldwin versus Philip Lindsay, and I said my exact answer was nobody likes Doug Baldwin more than me. But basically, with the philosophy of the Seattle Seahawks right now, Russell Wilson's attempts have bottomed out. And even watching that game back this week, the before the Chargers really took a really before the Chargers had him by the throat mm-hmm. up two t- up t- up two scores. Russell started have, having to air it out because of the way they had, you know, they were down multiple scores and they had to throw it a bunch. Halfway through the second quarter, six minutes to go in the second quarter, Russell Wilson had had six pass attempts and they had ran the ball 12, 13 times. Chris Carson was looking good until he asked to come out because he's a little nicked up. Mike Davis was looking decent. They were doing what they were made to do. Nick Van Etz, like one of the best tight ends, blocking tight ends in the league right now. And that's just the philosophy that we've talked about for weeks on here about what the Seahawks are doing with their run game. And it's making W's. Now, the Chargers go in there and handle business in Seattle, which is a huge, it's a much bigger win for the Chargers than it is a loss for the Seahawks. Right. So Because they really handled it. And then, and then you know, the Seahawks battled and they didn't quit and they cut it and they, they scored at the end and helped my teaser. And I didn't lose because they scored that touchdown at the end of the game. But <laughs> Doug Baldwin out there looking good, catches a 40-yard fly route down the sideline, um, had another ball that was taken away by right. penalty. Seemed like and he had more production than Doug what the Baldwin stat line had said. a bit had a busier, had a better looking game than those 12, 11 points or whatever he had, four for seventy or something yep, like that. Four for seventy seven. All something. right. So he had a better game than that four for seventy seven. He's a much better receiver than that, but they're not throwing the ball. And when they do, they got, you know, Tyler David Lockett. Moore. Tyler Lockett's been solid. He hasn't been phenomenal, but he's been solid. And he's catching touchdowns. And David Moore's been a touchdown hog. Right. And he's not the best wide receiver I've ever seen, but he's a really solid little prospect here. And he's not little. And he's getting hit between him and Lockett. They're stealing touchdowns mm-hmm. from Baldwin. So that's a long story to say I really love Baldwin, right. but he's <laughs> you know not getting any younger, even though I think he's got the mindset and the philosophy and the work ethic to play many years in this league until something happens with the Seahawks, unless you're in that game script where you're playing from behind, which obviously they're playing slow ball. They take the air out of the ball right now by their stance on the game, the way they approach it, the way they're practicing. They don't want to air it out. That's what we thought Doug Baldwin was going to get. A ton of targets. It's what he was getting the last couple of years. He's also playing on a bum knee and then hurt his knee, uh, his other knee. And right. Well, it's not yet. Yeah, but he doesn't look sluggish. He out was there. hurt to begin the year, and that's definitely nobody's fault but his. You can't throw him the ball if he's on the sidelines. We talked about that a couple times already tonight. So, but he's come back and he looks healthy and he looked really good this week. Coming out, I think that the Seahawks just have a bye. Could have sworn they had a bye. Pretty sure Doug Baldwin was on my line, on my bench with a bye week recently. Anyway, I I think he looked good coming out of a bye week. Um, 
Uh, I think maybe Mike Williams is the right answer for Dynasty because at this point, there's no chance that Doug Baldwin can get... I mean, right now, in a vacuum, his value can go up because he's taking a big dip this year. But he was still, you know, third... For, it's just... He was a second to third round startup pick last year after a bit, couple big seasons. People finally caught on that Doug Baldwin was really good. And then this year, going into the year, I think he was a fourth round draft pick. And just being a 30-year-old receiver, you have no chance but to work backwards down that a, that ADP startup. Mm-hmm. And Mike Williams is already, it as a young man just now playing in his second year in the middle of the fifth round, they're going to pass in the night like two ships. One's going one direction, one's going the other. If I need if I need two years of production, I feel like I'll probably be safer with Doug Baldwin. Right. Now, with the offense that the Seattle Seahawks are working on right now, maybe that that's – I mean, they've obviously, in the last couple of weeks, one's getting it with one catch for 55-yard touchdown and one's getting it with four catches for 70. It's the same score. Right. You know, so – you're probably better off to have Mike Williams at this point going forward in Dynasty than Doug Baldwin. That being said, I'm all about buying Doug Baldwin cheap. Right. Give it to me. Yeah. Give me some Doug Baldwin on the cheap. I think he, I think he's a great opportunity right now to go buy Doug Baldwin cheap, and I think I'd agree that I'd rather have Mike Williams. Um, dang, what was the question that I – oh, so I, this is the thing for me with Mike Williams, and, and maybe it's an easy answer – I feel like it's worth bringing up. Philip Rivers has one more year left on his contract. He's said he said before the team moved to to Los Angeles that he didn't want he was going to retire if they moved to Los Angeles. Yeah, they moved. He signed a three year deal. He's on next year is the last year of that deal. He'll be he'll be thirty seven. Do you think he's coming back? Well, and based on he's going to fill it up again based on other types of arguments just like this with other players i've talked about it with big ben and drew Brees, and i just a couple years ago i really missed out because i was we i was thinking about how old drew Brees was and it had it's it's very much in play here with philip rivers when the team's losing the old quarterback looks older it just happens you know and so, like Philip Rivers, he's like, I don't know how much longer I want to play, but they're on a win streak right now, and they're actually, if they they actually won that game despite the kicker, mm-hmm. and they cut them, mm-hmm. like they're not, they've, we all know that if they didn't start the season last year with Young Way Koo, Young Way Koo missing all those field goals, they make the playoffs, right? And so, winning fixes everything. Winning makes a thirty-seven-year-old quarterback feel thirty-three, and Philip Rivers is feeling great right now. So I don't I I don't like these types of questions to speculate on a guy coming back or not. But Philip Philip Rivers is looking better now than he has for the last couple of years because winning fixes everything, mm-hmm. and they're on this heater. They got a good run game. This is the first year in however many years that they haven't been depleted by injuries, and you thought it was going to happen. Still are sort of. They, but well, they haven't the, had Bosa. They haven't had uh, Vanette. Right? No. no uh, who's not Vanette? Oh, you talking about a. The cornerback, corner. yeah, and then Verrett, not Van Verrett, right? Verrett, and then and then and the tight end got hurt in the first Hunter days. Henry, Hunter yep. Henry goes down in the first day of OTAs, and so like you thought that the doomsday was coming again, but they've held out and they've they're on this winning streak. So I like Philip Rivers. If they don't just crumble to pieces over the back half of the season and miss the playoffs, for him to have a run in him and come back again. I'm speculating again, and I don't like speculating on quarterbacks and whether they're playing or not. But he looks younger now, and that's what happens when you win. So, but it, I missed out on taking advantage of liking what I saw out of Michael Thomas for the Saints because the Saints were supposed to be good, and then they were losing, and then they were good, and then they were losing, and all of a sudden Drew Brees looks old. Not that he wasn't, you know, putting up stats, but well, they're just rushing the shit out of the ball. Those stats look different. His stats went down as Alvin Kamara and well, that was last Mark, year, right? But even like two years ago, like they would without necessarily the great running game like Alvin Kamara gave them. They still just when you're when you're not winning, those fantasy points don't seem as important. I, I, it's it's weird, you know. Like I get it's they would say they've seemed fine to a. 28, 29 year old quarterback like Mac. When the Falcons lose, Matt Ryan doesn't feel like he's about to retire, right? Because he's not old. 30, but yeah. when the Saints started losing, 
they were like, well, we don't know. They were they were actually playing around with that contract two years ago. Remember that? They were not giving. He didn't sign an extension because he didn't know what Drew he wanted Brees to do. Drew might not be a saint. That was a real right. thing. They were like, he might retire. He might go play somewhere else, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, and then he comes back and all of a sudden the defense is good and they got Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas is a stud and now he looks 35 again. And so I just, I don't want to miss out on a Mike Williams thinking about Phil Phillip Rivers, Rivers maybe not being here. Right. I'm not going right. to play that game. All right. That's what I want to hear. Fair enough. All right. Well, uh, that's going to do it for today's free show. We're about to go jump over to the Patreon side of things and get a bunch of questions answered there. Got a bunch of good uh, stuff on the docket. Um, I, can't, I don't know all the specifics. We're about to t- talk about a ton of things. Uh, uh, we got some good questions, and we got some good trade uh, things to go through with some guys about what they – and we got some celebration, celebration laps on the – Dalvin Cook trades we were talking about. Get we didn't think he was gonna play this week and they had the bye week coming up, but we had a couple guys that were in some serious discussions over the last couple weeks to pick up Dalvin Cook and we were talking about getting those deals done before he hits the field healthy again. And they got there at least two guys I know for sure got Dalvin Cook this past week, and then he comes out there and looks shot out of a cannon. Yes, it was blocked well, but he hit that hole so hard and rushed for that 70 yard run, looking like Dalvin Cook. And my specific point to one guy who was thinking about this trade was Dalvin Cook just being a PPR vacuum. Mm-hmm. And and they came into the season saying that, oh, well, Latavius Murray played real good down the stretch last year and we're going to be a 50-50 split. And as soon as the season got here, bang, it was Dalvin Cook. And when Dalvin Cook is healthy, there is no split. The Vikings don't care how good Latavius Murray looks when Dalvin's out because they know that when Dalvin's on the field, they are a better team, right. a better offense. And maybe they give Latavius, they keep him with some run just to try and minimize a little bit of this injury risk with Dalvin Cook. But, I mean, if they were going to do that, they would have held him out last week if they really cared about this risk of injury. First so, of all, they should. Yes, that's the most aggravating thing in sports right now right. is bringing a guy back with a hamstring too early. Right. A week before a bye Freaking week, bye. it's easy. It's easy math. So mad. But the Vikings can't afford a, a stupid loss. Right. They got beat up by the Bills. Right. And then they got beat by the they got beat by the Saints and a fumble going into halftime by Thielen. That game gets changed, and then they got blown out by the Saints. So I understand just having the threat. And he played well and Dalvin came out Cook. healthy, so it right. all worked and out. They got the W, and that's right. all the Vikings. The, yes, the Vikings care about their young tailback, but you know what else they care about? They came into the league this year, coming to the season as one as a Super Bowl favorite. Mm-hmm. Maybe the NFC Super Bowl favorite for a lot of people because they just signed an $80 million quarterback. And they don't care about the next five years for Dalvin Cook. They care about this year because people are upset that they're not looking better as a team. Right. And obviously they had lost lost Everson Griffin for a couple of weeks, an absolute difference maker on defense with some mental issues. He's back, and the team's starting to click a little bit. You hope that Stephon Diggs comes back quickly and this team can really get on all cylinders. If they can get Dalvin Cook Defense out of the bye. playing well. Holy cow. A uh, little preview here for Patreon. We are gonna we got an Amari Cooper question. We got a Baker Mayfield question. We got some uh, a carry-on trade on the table. Boom. We got a Galloway trade on the table. Boom. So uh, a, lot, a lot of things uh, to get to over on Patreon. If you guys want to check that out, you're going to get an extra hour plus of content every single week. After six months of giving us the $5 holler, you get a free T-shirt. Uh, t-shirt comes with it, so that dang near pays for itself, the membership. Not to mention access to the community page. Get your questions answered, whether it be via text, or you answer it on the free show, or we answer it on the Patreon show, or we take it to YouTube live. There's right. just so many ways we can answer our patrons' questions. Right. All, all that fun stuff you said, Jay. And then, and then one of the guys that hooked us up two weeks ago, he jumped on the train after we came out and said, hey, guys, we need some help. You know, this is a lot. We put in a lot of effort. We've been doing this for three years. We see the downloads. We see all you guys hit you know, hitting us up through the different um, ways that you can talk to us and, and all that good stuff. But his his re- exact reaction to that was, it's the least I could do is give you five bucks. I've been listening to you for three years. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's, it's one of those things, you know, we know Rome wasn't built in a day, but, and maybe not everybody's got, you know, fifty dollars a month to give us but if everybody joins in if if half of you guys would throw us five bucks a month we'd be able to just make sure this thing keeps coming 
Right. And so that's... Uh, and improving and growing. Right. And exactly. And being able to go farther and doing more. And so, and we've... Video's coming. One day we're going to have a video. Right. And there, there's, there, you know... There's, Jay Wayne knows how to video this thing up. It's just a lot of work. He is kind of a videotographer. Right. You know? <laughs> Yeah, whatever that <laughs> cinematographer. Just, well, see, sure, yeah. Videographer, right? Videographer. Yeah, yeah like you that combine up. them. Yeah, you that's make. awesome. <laughs> we make up words around here. We give you new. We add to your vocabulary. We right. probably take away from your vocabulary. Yikes! But we definitely don't take away from your dynasty fantasy football team, and that's what matters. So we appreciate. We need you to click on our website. Go to the ffdynasty.com. Look at the middle of the page to the right. It says become a patron. And if you're like me and you're not the biggest on new technology stuff and you don't like change. I get it. I didn't even like change. I fought the first couple of weeks to get on Patreon and figure out how to answer these people's questions. But now I was born for this. I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm answering questions on Friday night. Like I got my alarm set at 8.30 p.m. Me and my wife were joking the other night because we're so old. We got the alarm set at the house at 8.40 on a Friday night. We're like We ain't even going back outside, much less going downtown to do something fun. And I'm like answering people's questions. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm just answering these trade questions. It's freaking awesome. I love doing it. And we got all that good stuff going for you. It's five bucks, you know, so right. and you don't like change. You don't want to know how to use a new new website. It's super easy. There's an app. It's, there's an app for it. It's interactive right through your email. Bang, bang. You get a notification. You ask a question. It tells you when we answered it. All that good stuff. And at the end of the day, if you're like, man, I don't really even have, I don't want to send a ton of trade questions in. Five dollars, really, help us out. We call it the five dollar holler to try to make fun of it, but literally, all we need. Some people pay more than that because they're awesome, and but everybody in there that's throwing us five dollars just makes this continue that much longer, that much harder. Help us out, absolutely, and uh, hit us up anywhere else you'd like to. Twitter at the FF Dynasty. I am C Myers. Casey's not with us this week. You can find him there. Dynasty Big Co at Dynasty Big Co. At Jay Wayne's World. If you're on five, if you're on iTunes, please hit us with that five star review, and uh, go to YouTube. Give us a subscription. We're going live on Sundays and answering sit start questions. Patreons have priority on that, but you can get hit the little notification button, and you'll be notified anytime we put up a new video. We're cutting up this podcast and throwing it out there and giving you a little more granular search. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening to us. Uh, let us know. Well, what's your fantasy to see? <laughs> We're going to get out of here. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties. Married to the game.